Hicks and Hickstead. Still plenty to come here. None have been able to master both the jumps and the clock together. Let's see if Jan Kandel can do it. Let's see if Eric Lamaz shared any insights as they passed each other at the in-out gate. Jan Kandel, known to be a very fast, efficient rider, but I didn't see Eric being all that dodgy around the course. I think you're spot on, John. I think we had a hang time issue. Too much time in the air for Hickstead as Petarusa is underway now with Jan Kandel. I'm still shocked, Ian. I know I just saw it. I just don't believe I just saw it. I can't quite believe that, that he, uh, he got the time fault, Eric. But anyway, it is what it is. And uh, the other senses you're going to get in the hitching ring now is that, well, hang on a second. You know, the door is open for us now, although Jan's just had that rail down. There'll be a sense of belief because I think, you, you know, you can get inside this time allowed without too much trouble, which is why I'm so shocked that Eric didn't do it. I don't want to sound like a broken record here, but... Well, both Rodrigo Pessoa and Paulo Berrios were, you know, three and four seconds under the time allowed. So it is achievable. Is it achievable with a perfect scorecard of jumping? That is what we have yet to determine. Really frustrating when the competition is setting up like it is and you're a rider like Jan, who's a real competitor to have two rails down so early in the course. And they were the only ones down. Time not a problem, early rails were. Eight jumping faults for Jan Kandel. He won't be happy with that. He would expect uh, Peter Russo to jump that fence all day long. And this again, that's a, uh, that's a time fault rail right there, Ian. He come around the course, it's not a difficult jump, but that's where he's thinking about the clock, not really allowing himself to set up. 